All right. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to build a, a slideshow app. And, and I'm going to preview the, the final version here. Basically, you can take any pictures you want. And the idea is you click next and go between the pictures. So I'm showing inspirational women leaders. And here's Rosa Parks. You click next. It goes to the next picture, Grace Hopper. Go to the next picture, Dorothy Vaughn. And finally, next picture, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. But like I said, you could put any pictures in with the code I'm going to show you. And finally, when you click on the last picture, this, this app has four pictures. When you click on the last picture, it goes it kind of flips around and goes back to the first, first picture. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to build this app. What I'm going to do is, is open up kind of a, a, a starter app, which is not completed. And then I can show you it almost pretty much from scratch. And so here's, here's this app. And all I've done with this app, as you'll see, is, is I've got uh, four, the four files in here. So the four files of the of the women, I don't have any components or or uh, code. Okay, and you can actually get these pictures if you want. It you know the the book has a website called DragonDropCode.com, which accompanies um, the Thunkel book book that you can find on on uh, Amazon. But if you go to Code Camp in a book and book resources, and this sample is actually from chapter three. If you go to chapter three. You can find all these these images, and so if you just kind of you know control click and save the image, and then you can come over here in Thunkable and um, you will upload upload an image. You can either drag it or just choose a file. So it's really easy to get files into to Thunkable. Okay. Anyway, so let me just set up the user interface uh, for the for this video for this slideshow. Right. So we've got four pictures, and we just want the user to be able to kind of navigate between between things. So first thing I want is I'm going to bring in an image component because that's just going to show the picture. It's not a button. It's not clickable, right? Um, so I'm going to have this image. I'm going to start the picture with um, Rosa Parks. And I'm going to make its width be relative size. That's relative to its parent, which is the whole screen. So I basically want to take up almost the whole screen. And then the height, I'm just going to pick um, uh, I'm just going to pick uh, fill uh, uh, con fit contents. Okay, so anyway, it's going to show up kind of like that, and you can play around with properties to make make things look look better. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is just add a button. So I'm going to go back and grab the button component, and uh, I want it to be on the bottom here, and I'm just going to make the text say next, and then I'm going to you know for when we get to the code part, I'm going to call it next button. Okay, so I've got this picture. I've got a next button. If I run the app right now, of course, I can click next all I want and nothing happens because I haven't coded the, the behavior yet. Okay. All right. So next thing, this is really the, the more important part is we're going to go to the blocks and we need to code the behavior. And basically our behavior, behavior is every time the next button is clicked, we want something to happen. But every time it's going to be different, right? depending on what picture is showing, we need to go to the next picture. Okay, and I'm gonna show you this using what's called if else statements. Um, so I'm gonna come over here and grab just an if block. And you know, if is the way we ask questions in, in code. Um, and, but if you click on this blue thing, it's called a mutator button. If you click on it, you can add more branches, right? Um, you can say, well, if it's not true, do else, and you can also say else if, and we'll get to the else if in a bit, but let me just grab else, okay? And so that would be two branches. If something do else, do something else. So let's let's start simple and let's just say, okay, well, if the image and you know the property we care about is picture, right? If I go back to the designer, this picture property is where we set the file which shows up here, okay? And in our blocks, um, we could ask the question, is the image picture, so the get block kind of gets us whatever the picture is. And when you get the picture property, it really gives you the name of the file. Okay, in this case, we think it's going to be parks.jpg on the first click at least. Okay, but really what we want to do is we want to see if that picture, you know, kind of the current picture we want to see if it's equal to, uh, and this is a little bit tricky. We're going to use a red text block. 
Okay, and, and you know, basically you can put any text here, but we're, what we're gonna put is parks.jpg. And notice I've got the whole file extension, everything. And that needs to map exactly the name of the file name over here. Okay, so we're saying if the file showing is parks.jpg, then what we wanna do is actually change the picture property and we wanna set it to um, whatever the next picture is showing. I think in, in the one I showed you, the second picture showing, and, and you wanna get these file names exact, so be, be very careful. But I think the second one we show is Grace Hopper. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, if the first one showing is Parks, then, or if the one showing is Parks, we're gonna show um, hopper.jpg. Okay, otherwise, let's just go back to parks. Okay, so I'm just going to do a simple test just to get um, something going here. So, right now, um, I'm just going to say if the picture's parks, go to hopper. If it's not parks, it's something else, go back to parks. All right, so let's go back to designer and test this. I do my preview. Now, I'm hoping when I click this, it'll change to the Grace Hopper picture. Okay, cool. Now, if I click it again, it should go back to Rosa Parks. Okay, cool. And so on. Okay, let's go back to edit because we, you know, and, you know, I always like to, you know, just code a little bit, you know, just get something to work and then add more and more. Okay. And really what we need is, you know, we need to ask a little more detailed questions because we've got four, you know, two other files that we're not even considering the, the other two women. Okay, so I'm going to go back to this if thing or the if mutator button, and I'm going to add two else ifs here. Okay, and you'll notice as I add those down here, they show up in the main screen. Okay, so now I've got kind of one, two, three, four branches is was really what I want. You know, because depending on what's showing in the picture, I want to go to a different thing. Okay, I'm going to need some more equals blocks. So I'm just going to copy this, command C, command V, and I'm going to copy this equals down here. And what I'm going to say, if it's parks, change to hopper. If it's hopper, so if it's the second picture, I want to change to the third picture. Okay. So this one is going to be, let's just say Vaughn will show up as the third picture. And once again, make sure you spell these things exactly. Whatever your file names are, you got to be exact and precise with this. Um, finally, if it is Vaughn, okay, so let's let's grab this equals again, command C, command V. If it is Vaughn, then let's switch it finally to the our, to our fourth picture, which is going to be um, uh, the fourth picture is, and let's make sure we get the file name exact over here. The fourth picture, picture is Ginsburg with a U, okay? So I'm gonna put if, so if my question really is if it's Vaughn, if it's the third picture, change it to the fourth picture. Oh, sorry, if it's the third picture, yeah, I wanna change it to Ginsburg here. Okay, and if it's not Parks, if it's not Hopper, if it's not Vaughn, then I know it, it's on Ginsburg, and then I want to go back to Parks. I could say else if it's Ginsburg, switch to Parks, but just by elimination, I know if these three questions are all false, then this final else catch all, I know it was any of those, so I know it was Ginsburg, and I can go back to Parks. Okay, so this this whole thing is called an if else if. Okay, and you know as you can see, you can get very complicated in your how many branches you have in your, you know, and essentially for this event of the button being clicked, you don't know what you wanna do. You, every time you're gonna do something different, every time it's clicked and you have to use ifs to kind of ask the questions you need to ask. Okay, let's go back just to test this out. In the designer, I'll do preview. And now I think when I click on these buttons, it's gonna kind of navigate through the, the four things. Cool, okay. Um, let me just just say kind of a last summary. So you know this, I pretty much showed you this this example to kind of 
introduced the kind of complex if else ifs okay later in 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 this video series i'm also going to do an example where you do a slideshow but you don't have to ask all these questions like this instead you kind of use an index a number and you kind of walk one two three four five and that's a much more generic and kind of better solution um, to, to code a slideshow because you don't have to always specifically you know mention the data that you're using that way you can change the data change the pictures and it would still work but this is a good example for learning how if else works and as you can see you know we we do have this kind of nice slideshow um, with just a little bit of code um, and we can kind of slide through this stuff you know the other things you can do with this kind of slideshow kind of app is you, you can have quizzes um, study guides, all kinds of stuff. You can build a lot of different kind of apps with it.